Hello folks and welcome to another build overview. For this video I chose the Vampire 2 HD. This is a frame manufactured by a company called Flywoo and you know I've seen this online and it immediately caught my attention. I mean it looks gorgeous and you know I didn't know how it would fly but it looked really nice so I decided to buy it and build it and see how it flies and I was amazed it really really flies nice. Uh, with default beta flight settings, it, it flies nice, you know, minimum vibrations. With, with some tuning, it flies really nice, no vibrations, none whatsoever. You know, even when you're doing hard corners, uh, split S, you know, any hard maneuver. I'm really happy with the way this quad flies. And it's very powerful and fast if you choose the right setup. So let me show you what it comes with. Uh, give you my thoughts around the build, how did it go, what kind of a challenges you might face when building this, uh, this kind of a frame. So this frame comes with those ARM LEDs, which are a very, very nice thing to add. As you can see, four, four ARM LEDs, and they add like a very, very nice effect um, when you arm the aircraft and when you fly it. The intensity varies as you vary the throttle. Uh, it comes also with TPU mounts, which are also nice. As you can see here, one TPU mount is to protect the camera, and you have TPU mounts to protect the DJI digital FPV antennas and a shark fin over here. The shark fin is a very nice addition because if this flips over like this, the shark fin is going to protect the antennas and they won't sustain uh, a major damage. Uh, it also comes with uh, two more TPU mounts that I don't have here. Uh, they're basically TPU mounts to enable you to mount your Crossfire or uh, FR Sky long range uh, receivers, the antenna for the receivers. Okay, so as you're building this drone or this frame, what kind of a challenges might you face? So if you look at the base plate, let me put it like this. So the base plate, as you can see, is a little bit lower than the arm, which means if you choose an ESC, like the one that I've chosen here, that has long battery pads, and you try to mount it in the normal direction, it won't fit, or it might be very tight and hit the carbon fiber frame in the back. So what you will have to do is mount it sideways, like I've done here, so I've mounted the ESC side, sideways and you will have to basically solder the wires and take them through the frame to the back here and then uh, take them through the slot in the back, which is fine. I mean, I've been flying the quad like this for, for a very long time. Um, no issues, none whatsoever. And, um, you know, it, if you just wire it like that, if you have an ESC with long battery pads, if not, you know, and you have an ESC with short pads, you can mount the ESC uh, the normal way. The other challenge that you might face while building the squad is actually the stack height. So this is basically, as you can see, obviously, this is a DJI digital FPV compatible frame. And it has this TPU mount where you can mount the air unit. Uh, the problem is that the space between the base plate and the air unit when you mount it is very uh, small uh, or very low. So basically, if you use normal standoffs, you won't have enough space to basically uh, fit the ESC board and um, the flight controller board. So in my case here, I do have clearance. I don't know if you can see it, but I do have enough clearance between the air unit and the flight controller, which is the second board from the bottom. And the reason is that I didn't use any standoffs. I don't know if you can see it here. I didn't use any standoff. What I've used was plastic nuts. So between the base plate and the ESC, there's a plastic nut. And then there's another plastic nut between the ESC and the flight controller. And the result was that there is enough, enough clearance between each board and there's enough clearance between the ESC and the base plate and I have also enough clearance between the flight controller and the air unit. I don't know if you can see it from here, 
but you know uh, the RISC clearance and you can plug in the, mini, the micro USB or the mini USB here uh, sorry the micro USB you can plug it in easily and there's enough space for for cooling for the flight controller uh, for the antenna I'm not using uh, a long-range crossfire or R9M Afrasky R9M antennas so I didn't use the TPU mount that would take a T-shaped antenna instead I mounted a standard RXSR and I did that here in the front so basically I mounted the antenna just in the front uh, behind the camera here and then I took the antennas out like this and I mounted one antenna on this arm and the other on the other arm uh, so this is basically it for the build so two main challenges only basically the two challenges that I've mentioned other than that, the build is, is really smooth and nice and, you know, uh, I would really recommend this frame. It flies nice, um, no no bad tendencies, really, uh, it flies really well with, with default uh, beta flight PIDs. You can tune it a little bit if you want to suit your flying taste, but other than that, no issues. I would really recommend uh, this frame. Um, if you like this video, please do hit the subscribe and like button, uh, that would help me a lot. Uh, what I'll do is, this is part one, I'll record a part two video to show you the actual flight so that you can see how this thing flies. Uh, I'll set up some gates, uh, you know, I'll do hard maneuvers, uh, I'll do a split ass, I'll fly through the gates, you know, around obstacles and you'll see how this thing flies. So those are my thoughts, please do drop me a comment if you have any questions, any issues you know if you're building this and you have any questions please do uh, do ask in the comments section i'll be more than willing and glad to, to help you out thank you very much for watching and have a nice day